Hello and welcome. Uh, this video I am going to highlight three concepts of writing that are often uh, confused and so I want to take the time to clarify. Uh, these concepts are retelling, summary writing, and paraphrasing. And uh, where in a way they are similar, the only similar piece of it, especially with summary writing and paraphrasing, is that they, they're not standalone pieces of writing. They're a part of a bigger piece. They're necessary for bigger pieces of writing. Um, retelling, uh, the first concept that I really want to talk about is something that uh, we do typically in elementary school. And as an elementary teacher, which I have been, uh, we use retelling as a means to get the students, do you understand what you've read? Could you tell me what that story was? And where that is completely acceptable in an elementary um, environment, in college, it's different because we're not focusing on you retelling. We need to give an overview. So I'm going to give you some examples of each one uh, to hopefully uh, really fill that out for you and really clarify those concepts for you. So retelling, I'm going to use a favorite childhood story. Um, and it's and again, if you're thinking more of that elementary lines, you're thinking of somebody telling you a story. You've read it, and now you are verbally telling someone that story without having to read it. And so if I was going to tell you, it's like, hey, I heard this great story, and it's the three little pigs and the bad wolf. And you're like, well, what's that story about? So if I'm going to retell it, I'm going to talk to you about, you know, there was these three little pigs, and they were getting really ready to move out of their mom's house. And so, you know, mom was very excited, but she said, you know, do things right the first time. Um, you know, make sure that what you do is quality so it lasts for a long time. And so they go out and the first little pig, he finds straw because it was the easiest. And so he built his house with straw. And then his brother, he, you know, he, he found some sticks, you know, it's a little bit sturdier, more sturdier than uh, straw. So he builds his house with sticks. And then the last little pig, it took him a little bit more time, but he built his house with bricks. And so one day this wolf comes along and as you know, wolves love pigs and he saw the little pig that was living in the house with straw. And so he yelled and he goes, little pig, little pig, let me come in. And that little pig, he yells out, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. And so that wolf, he huffed and he puffed and he blew that house down and then he ate the little pig. And so... He's still hungry, so he goes to his brother's house, the one who had built his house with sticks. And he yells, and he goes, little pig, little pig, let me come in. And that little pig yells back out, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Well, that wolf, he huffed, and he puffed, and he blew that house down, and he ate that little pig. And then he's still a little hungry, and he sees the third little brother. So he goes to his house that was built with bricks. And he huffed, and he puffed, and he huffed. And he puffed, and that house didn't come down because it was built real sturdy. And he's like, you know what? I want that pig. So he got up on the roof, and he's trying to find a way in with that little pig on the inside. You know, he's, you know, managing his home, and he's going to make sure that nobody's going to come get him. So he puts this big pot of boiling water uh, where the chimney, you know, in his fireplace. And so he's boiling that hot water and it's getting really hot and the wolf he finally finds the hole to the chimney and he's like I'm gonna go get that pig well he goes through the chimney and flop he falls in the boiling water and he dies he gets boiled alive and so the little pig invites his mom over and they have wolf for dinner and she reiterates when you do something you do it right the first time and always use the best and the sturdiest materials. And so there's a moral there. If you're gonna do something, do it the right way. Well, that's a retelling. I just retold you that story. I probably added in my own little flavor here and there, but you, it's the gist of what the normal story was, but it was a retelling. I told you the story from beginning to end. I gave you my characters. I gave you the characteristics. I gave you the dialogue. And that's what a retelling is. It has all of those pieces. It is a cohesive story from beginning to end. And this is where people get confused. Summary writing is not the same thing. And this is, I'm gonna tell you a couple things that students have done in the past. Uh, typically when I am starting students out on summary writing, I usually start it when we're reading novels and I'll have them write me a summary on a chapter. Can you give me an overview of what the chapter is? 
and they'll do what they'll do is they'll go through the chapter and they'll pick out some sentences and then they kind of form them together and they think that that's a summary. Well, that's not a summary because you're picking out specifics. And think of it this way. If I had told that story with the three little pigs and I was like, three little pigs, you know, he built his house with straw. The second one, his was with sticks. He got eight. The third one, uh, stone, the wolf fell in. Does that even make sense? Not really, because I, it wasn't cohesive. All I did was pull out a couple examples, throw them together. Well, that does not a summary make. A summary is an overview of what the bigger story was. So if I was to give a summary, let's say I was going to do an analysis on the three little pigs um, and the moral of the story, I, my summary would be more of um, teaching the moral of doing things correctly the first time, utilizing the story of the three little pigs where they uh, had built different materials and in the end the strongest material was sturdy and saved the life of you know, the third pig. I'm telling you there's three little pigs, I'm telling, but I'm not giving you the, the details where it's really going to confuse you. Now, granted, that's right off the top of my head. I would have to wordsmith that. But the general idea is, yes, I'm talking that there's three little pigs because that is a big part of the story. There's a wolf, which is my antagonist, um, and then the moral of doing things correctly the first time. So, you know, again, I guess just off the top of my head in the story of the three little pigs, um, by teaching the moral of doing things correctly the first time. Uh, it utilizes the story of three pigs, uh, three brother pigs, um, and then choosing different materials to build their house. And in the end, the strongest material saved his life, confirming that his mother was correct and that um, doing things right the first time and, you know, always wins out in the end. So you still have the idea of it. Uh, the other piece of that, if I was writing an analysis on the moral, that's coming through that I'm going to be talking about the moral. Now, the body, if I was going to be doing an analysis, that's going to go into the specifics of each pig, what they chose, the mindset behind it, and then their end result. But in the summary, I'm just giving an overview. I am leaving the body of whatever that analysis or whatever it is that I'm writing to really get into the detail and to explain the story um, more in detail. The takeaway with summary writing is it is to be an overview of a completed piece of work. So it's either a story, an article, a book, whatever. If you're doing an analysis or critique or response writing, utilizing either, either one of those, you have to give a summary of the completed work, which means you have to read the whole thing. Um, and it's only like a paragraph. That's all you have time for. And so you have to look at it. Okay, I have a paragraph. I have maybe seven to eight sentences, maybe 10, depending on how long it is. But really, no more than a paragraph um, in order to give the reader an idea of what it is. So when I start getting into the details, they're not totally lost. Okay, it is an overview. A summary is not a standalone piece of writing. It is always a smaller piece of a bigger project and it is a necessary piece. So without it, if I just had my intro, I will be, you know, or uh, the moral of the three little pigs will be, you know, uh, discussed, you know, I don't know, you, you know what I'm talking about, the, you know, according to the story of the three little pigs, uh, the overriding moral of the story is about doing things correctly the first time, you know, that's my intro. And then if I go right into, the details of it, I really don't have a foundation of really how that even applied. That's really kind of for that overview. I hope that makes sense. So your intro is typically going to be, what is it that you're reading? Um, who wrote it? That's very important. And then your thesis statement about what you'll be discussing. In this case, it would deal with the moral of the story. And then the summary comes next giving me the overview of the story, and then I get into the details and I start unpacking it in my supporting paragraphs. And then my conclusion, which will reinforce my thesis statement and dealing with the moral of the story and how it, you know, the final, the end result with that. And that's really how that works. It's not a standalone unless I'm teaching summary writing and I say, write me a summary on chapter one. 
but when you're the real purpose of a summary is to be a smaller part of a bigger piece. Now that last concept, paraphrasing. Some people confuse par um, summary writing with paraphrasing. Again, not the same thing. A summary is over a completed piece of work, a whole article from beginning to end, a book beginning to end. Paraphrasing is on a passage of research that you're doing. And typically we will use this, and you'll use this probably even if you were doing a critique or something like that where it was just one source, where you are trying to get support so you needed to pull that out, but you're going to put that in your own words, which you should. In fact, that should always be your first line in any type of research writing or any type of paper writing is to paraphrase. You do not want a whole paper full of direct quotes because then it's a patchwork of someone else's words and that's not it you need to your inflection um, how you you know you need it in your words in order for it to flow easily into the next idea so um, that paraphrasing is on a passage necessary in your support okay so those the paraphrasing will be in the support paragraphs do not forget that you need an in-text citation because if you're paraphrasing someone else's work, it's still their work, even if you put it in your own words. It's their research. It's their ideas. It's their content. You still need to um, make sure that you have an in-text citation with it. So I hope that that was clear for you guys, that these are three totally different concepts and really how they are utilized. Okay, so retelling, you're not going to be using that in academic writing. You're not. You will be using summary writing, which is an overview of a completed piece of work, and paraphrasing, which is um, passages that you use as support in your supporting paragraphs. So I hope that was clear, um, and, and just to make sure that you're using the correct verbiage and that when someone is asking it of you, that you understand exactly what they're asking for. So have a great day. I'll talk to you later.